Hello, Veronica. I'm going to uh, try to explain to you what I've discovered in terms of the RStudio commands um, for what we are talking about this evening with the binomial distribution. All right. Um, I've got a question here just to save myself having to write write it out and take up a lot of space on the screen on my iPad. And I'm going to explain to you what we would do with a question like this in terms of RStudio. Um, if we have 12 multiple choice questions on the quiz and each question has five possible answers, then we start by thinking about the probability of getting it a question correct, which is 1 in 5, which is 20% or 0 0.2. So that's going to be our p-value for the binomial distribution here, okay? Um, now the question says find the probability of having four or less correct answers if you were just choosing them at random. And so normally if we were doing this longhand the way I was showing you um, this evening, I would actually have to work out for four or less correct answers. I would have to go like probability of zero and work that out, probability of one right answer and so on, all the way up to four, and then I'd have to add those up. <coughs> So oh, here's what I found out about our studio and how it will do that for you and save you um, some work in the process, okay? There's two different commands that we can use for the binomial approximation using our studio. One of those is the denorm command. The other is the p-norm. Um, Sorry, not, not denorm. I'm sorry. Can I can I back up there for a minute? The d binom command. We're doing binomials here. Okay. The other one is the p binom. Okay. And I've learned what the difference is between those. So, the p the d binom. This one here. What it does is it gives you the probability if you know the exact number of successes you want. So if I said, what's the probability that I'll get exactly six questions right on this test, then I would use the denom. Okay, so that's going to be the probability of exact number. The question that I'm being asked here is like the one that we were looking at where it's the probability of a number or less, let's put it that way, because um, it's saying at least four, right? Um, probability of having four or less, sorry, okay. So when it says four or less, that's when it, this kind of thing um, comes in when we're, we're saying x has to be 4 or lower in terms of the number of questions that we want to get correct. So that's why we would choose the p binom function rather than the d binom function. If it says what's the probability of getting exactly 6 or something, let's say it was exactly 6, we would use the d binom function. Other than that, you're going to put exactly the same things into the brackets for either one of those functions. So you just have to figure out which one you want to use uh, according to how the question is worded. So as we said, we're going to use, for this question, we're going to use p binom because we want a range of answers. We want from four down. And then we need to know what to put in our brackets. According to what I have learned since you left about an hour ago, um, the stuff that goes in the brackets is, first of all, the number that we want to have success. So we want, in this case, we want 4 or less, so that's why the 4 is the first one. Then we have to tell it the size of the sample, which is 12. And then we have to tell it the probability and I didn't leave my, myself enough space, so let me go down here and just start this bracket again. Four, size 12, that's how many questions there are on this test. And then we have to also tell it probability of a success, which is prob 
equals 0.2. Okay. If we do that, then RStudio is going to spit out the probability of getting 4 right, or 3 right, or 2 right, or 1 right, or none right on this test. On the other hand, if I were to use the d binome function, that would be when I want exactly, let's say, 6 like we did earlier. I want to get just 6 right, so I get 50% on this quiz. And then I would put in the same parameters as I used above, which would be the size of the questions is 12, like there's 12 to choose from. And again, the probability of getting a single question right is 12. So I would set it up as the D binome when I know exactly 6, when I know I want to get exactly 6. I would set it up as a p binome when I want x to be less than or equal to 4. So it's a range of values from 0 all the way up to 4. So I hope that helps with the, with the binomial experiment. And I will also keep trolling around and looking for some stuff for you on the z-scores and the percentiles as well.